All right, well, earlier this week, we went and took out the FX Impact M3 rifles. Now, initially starting off, I did run into a few issues with getting my elevation adjustments right. So what ended up happening is my scope was absolutely maxed out on elevation, and I was still about 30 MOA away from center at 50 yards. So what I noticed in playing with this thing is that the way these barrels are set up, they have a compensator on the end and they've got a sleeve over your main barrel. But when it's tightened, the barrel can still twist, and we'll get into this in a second, but if you look in here, the barrel itself is actually twisting a little bit, meaning so when you tighten the sleeve and the compensator or the suppressor on, you're actually rotating the entire barrel. And when I was doing that, it allowed me to bring my point of impact up about 40 MOA from where I was hitting. So I was able to finally get it zeroed in, but that's kind of got me a little concerned. So I want to take this apart today, take a look at the way the barrel attaches and actually see what's going on in there because you know what, that's what I do. So let's uh, get this thing taken apart, take a look at it and see what's going on within the barrel here. All right, well, after doing a quick breakdown, I think this isn't gonna be as complicated as I thought it might be. So that's gonna be good. So what we end up with here is, you can see where this is kind of a bullpup design. You've got your, like, what we call the breech, back here in the back. The entire length of the barrel comes up here and ends somewhere uh, right up about in here between the sleeve and the sound suppressor. So what this has on it is this actually has a, what looks like to be a barrel clamp right here on the front of the receiver. So what that looks like, there's also a set screw back here, to tighten some things up. So hopefully just tightening these up a little bit will help me prevent the barrel from keep trying to rotate on me. So this isn't gonna be near as complicated as I thought. So let's take a look at that and make sure it's gonna work how we think it is. All right, so here's the two screws and doing a quick look at them. Um, they're actually not even tightened, which definitely could be leading to some of my issues. But you know what, just for, curiosity sake let's go ahead and take apart the barrel and just kind of see what everything looks like on the inside while we got it to this point all right so that was actually a very easy barrel removal i just ended up undoing the set screw in the back and then everything slid right out so i think the barrel clamp in the front wasn't clamped very tight and then the one in the back probably wasn't either i think that's what was giving me all of the movement in my barrel but let's take a look at this and you can see all the different components this is made up so i'm not even going to pretend to know what all this does at, at this point so uh, we've got just basically a brass section back here. It looks like it's got a few gas ports. Um, I do know that is where uh, the plunger feeds the pellet into, so I don't know exactly what purpose these have as far as the gas regulation and the way it all goes through there, but that's what this is. looks like it's contained by two O-rings to get a seal. You've got kind of a mediator portion right here that connects all of this to your barrel portion, which is then, of course, threaded up here in the front for the sleeve and the compensators. Now, one interesting thing, looking at this, I'll right, screw this on so you guys can see. So actually right there at the muzzle, you've got these vent holes that disperse gas out the sides. So <clears throat> just doing a quick look at it, what that actually means is that means that the rest of this tube is actually gonna be um, basically one more large component to the suppression, the sound suppression system of these rifles, which is why even due to the high pressures and things, they are ridiculously quiet. So because this threads in to your liner where those vents are, that now leads into this entire tube using it as essentially one very, very large suppressor on the end of these barrels. And then that all threads in the place. So, okay, well with that, I'm hoping now after seeing how everything works on the inside, we can just tighten up these barrel clamps in the front. It looks like they weren't even tightened. The screws in them were loose. Um, and then also that one in the back that just kind of helps keep it into position. So we'll tighten those back up. We'll go out and try again, see if everything holds a little bit tighter. But you know, overall, still the accuracy was phenomenal. I was just a little bit worried about it drifting over time with some of these things being a little bit loose. But let's go ahead and get it put back together.
All right, well, the barrel's back in now and everything seems tight. The barrel's not rotating anymore. So along with these um, screws that do keep it in position, I did see one thing. There's actually some indexing notches in the back on the barrel. And once I got those seated into the back, I could feel where they were supposed to go and those locked it into place. So I don't know what exactly happened, but it feels like the barrel was not assembled far enough into the receiver. It wasn't indexed correctly. And those little indexing notches were not holding the barrel in place because that's what they're there for. Um, so with this, now we've got to put back together, got everything tightened up and clamped. The barrel is not rotating, feels much more robust. Um, some of the concerns I have are alleviated because of that. Um, don't know how it got put together this way, but hey, things happen. I get that. But a little bit of quick breakdown, very simple system. Overall, not too bad. So now we can go out and try it again, make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to, make sure it's holding zero, and hopefully the accuracy should be still as good or even better now that everything's tightened up.